making a, a, an effort to come out and be a part of the process and have their voices be heard. So I, I, I thought that was very, very encouraging because at this point, that's what we're trying to do um, when it comes to the census. Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting our, our voices heard and, and not just one way we use we use our voices and we express our, our intent with voting and now we want to make sure that we have um the our resources that come to our community um that you know for 10 years we we talk about this every month but this is something that happens once every 10 years and it affects the next 10 years well um COVID has been a a issue the pandemic bringing support to our communities, um, lower income communities, uh, minority communities, and so many things that we um, know on the ground that we need. Awesome. We need to telegraph that message to all of the, those people in government, in the federal government, and let, let them know resources need to come to our borough in, in a real way. And this is part of the discussion. I see that we are, Third in the city in terms of um, population of reporting, self-reporting. So we're at 53%. And that's not great, but you know what? I think we need to, at this point, celebrate um, that number because we haven't had um, enumerators come in yet. And this is all self-reporting. So this is all people on the ground, your nonprofits, our, all these meetings, uh, really empowering our community to go and do this self-reporting period. So, I, you know, it's it's not where we want to be, obviously. We want to be 100%. But at 53%, I think we need to give ourselves and each other a round of, of, of applause because we did not, you know, relinquish this. Um, we wanted to stay involved. We start kept going Kept, kept coming to these meetings, kept um, giving each other information, and we've been a part of phone banks, we've been a part of these virtual uh, canvassing, like all types of things that we've been uh, involved in, and we've been a, a think tank for each other. So I think that's so, so important, and, and it's key to where we are today, which is, I don't know if we could have predicted we would be here at 53%. Now, we always want to be number one. We're number one, right? As Bronx Bronxites, we want to be number one in the good things. So we want to continue that discussion today around what we can do to make people engaged, to make people uh, interested to be involved. We see a lot of activism on so many other fronts around so many other issues, including uh, you know uh, criminal justice issues. And we want people to know, let's have that same activity around the census. Let's do that. So we have a few guest speakers today. It's always interesting to hear from our guests. They tell us where we're where we are. They give us um, new new um, challenges and solutions. And then often they also give us inspiration. Um, today we we have um, Lucia De La Cruz um, from. She's a partnership specialist uh, west in the West and South um, Bronx um, field. Uh, division of the New York Regional Census Center. So that was a long uh, title, Lucia. You got a lot to live up to. That's a pretty long title. Uh, thank you for coming and being a part of the discussion today. Um, unmute yourself and please, you know, share with us uh, what you have uh, regarding uh, our status right now. You're still on mute. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, can you guys hear me now? Oh, we can hear you now. Great, great. So I am um, Lucia de la Cruz. I'm partnership specialist. I'm covering for Maria. Maria is at another event and she asked me to come. And I'm delighted to come because I know Maria it's, was the first one on the ground in the Bronx. She's done excellent work. She's one of the hardest working people I know, okay? So you gotta give it to Maria. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, representing Maria. She's at another event, at a media event. She's also a media specialist. So we have, you know, we wear a lot of hats. And one of the things that I do, um, besides being a specialist, is being the liaison for the um, 
one of the ACOs in the Bronx, the, the, the South and West, uh, the West and the South Bronx office. And um, I just emailed um, Tracy some, a letter because we are, um, so I, we're really in a situation where we, we went out there and we recruited so thousands of people at the colleges, at the libraries, and the, the, the ACO that I work with, they did an amazing job. They're the hardest working people I know in terms of going out there. They were, they were, they were at every event. Now, because of the pandemic, okay, it, it caused us a lot of um, disruption. And one of the things that happened, we had to cure a lot of the training spaces for these thousands of people that, that were hired, that were newly hired. And uh, like, for example, I have secured Lincoln. Lincoln is one of my partners. They've done amazing work. So if you're wondering what's going on in the South Bronx, you got to think Lincoln. You got to think you guys have done amazing work. You got to think Hostos Community College. But Lincoln did amazing work for us. They gave us uh, the, um, the, um, the CEO, Mr. Milton Nunez. He gave us the red carpet. Okay, he says, after I did a presentation there, they say, well, you know, what do we, what do you want us to do? And I said, well, you could do a lot. You have so much outreach. And they basically opened doors to us, to all other partners, to the um, consulates. And I was able to share a lot of the consulates that I couldn't handle because, you know, I speak Spanish and English, but, you know, there were some that was, was African consulates. I shared that with my team members who are from Africa. And they went out there and they did amazing work with these people. Because, you know, when you think about a hospital like Lincoln, they have so much network. And they shared that with me. They were so generous in sharing all this. And I was able to, you know, we were, we were able to make an impact. So they, able, they were very willing to give us space for training. So was hostels. So were the libraries. Um, and, uh, but after the pandemic, things change. You know, it's not business as usual. We having a very, very difficult time. Um, specifically because, you know, we have a very limited budget, so we're not able to pay. We need to, you know, be, be able to get donated spaces. You know, it's not easy for us to get, um, to pay. We don't, we don't have the means at this point. So, uh, as you know, you know, we extended every operation, okay, for more than 120 days. So we need, that means that puts us under budget in terms of what the expectation was. And, uh, so this is something that, for all your attendees, I, I, I ask, it's an urgent need that we have. And I would appreciate, um, Tracy said she was, she'll share the letter that I sent her. And um, we really need that help from everyone. Um, some of the churches have been very, very uh, willing to come forward and help us. And I really appreciate that. The faith-based community is wonderful. Um, they're, you know, like all of you guys, they're a trusted member in the community. And they're, you know, they're making, they're, they're trying to help, but lim they have limited spaces. And so many, we have so many people to train that we need to figure out from, I see, let me see. So from July 13, I believe, all the way to the end of August. And we already secured some, some, some training for this Friday with uh, one of our great, great, great partner, which is um, part of the solution, POTS. Right away, the executive director there, she was willing to help me. She said, oh yeah, sure. And she, you know, so, you know, we, the, the reason why we're making a difference is because we have wonderful partners. People make the difference. And this is why we're able to make, despite the pandemic, we're able to make a difference. And with the schools, I specifically focus on school. I, you know, my background is in education. I'm a math and science teacher. And um, one of the things, also community, I do stuff in the community in terms of uh, community organizing with parents. And part of the thing that helped us, okay, if you think about it, was the pandemic. Um, so sometimes you have a blessing in disguise, or sometimes you have a, um, um, even during, you know, periods of difficulty, you have opportunities. And one of the opportunities that made itself available was the um, electronic devices for parents who normally will fall under the digital divide and will not have these, these devices at home to complete the census um, questionnaire. So their children bringing back, bringing tablets, bringing laptops home made it possible for a lot of these parents to complete the census at home. So that made an impact in places in the Bronx where normally traditionally would not respond well. Um, so you have a lot of different partners. So partners make the difference. I know Maria has great partners. Um, I know that um, Dominicano USA, they've done excellent work in outreaching. I mean, this is what it takes. It takes 
it takes um, commitment from partners. When a partner is willing to um, to even spend, donate money out of their own, you know, pockets to make something happen, which is the case of Dominicano USA, right? They did, a, they did events and then they basically, uh, this is what Maria told me, so, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Eddie, you there, right? Yeah, thank you so much, you know. <laughs> we need, I'm sorry to interrupt you, go ahead, thank no, you. No, go ahead, go ahead, no, I'm glad that Maria got you first. I would've gotten you, but Maria was a year, was a year ahead of me uh, in terms of, uh, uh, starting in the Bronx. She was the first one to um, start in the Bronx. Um, I had a commitment with a school district. I couldn't I couldn't start. I, uh, so I started a year ago. I didn't start two years ago. And I worked in 2010. In 2010, we worked in Washington Heights. I worked in Washington Heights and the West Bronx. And one of the things that I noticed, and I know you guys probably want to know, how do some places actually do better than others? And it's because it takes, it takes non for you know, organizations. It takes community effort. And once they bring about this training, this 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 knowledge, knowledge is key. One one people know this, you know, I remember in, in 2000, Washington Heights had an incredible outreach. A lot of the community and the elected officials there went out, out of their way to make sure people knew about census, okay? So they increased the response rates a little. By 2010, it was astronomical. We were doing 77% in some places. And it was because of the work that was the foundation that not-for-profits not had laid out and also elected officials. And the same thing happens in the Bronx. I worked some of the areas in like um, Van, Corlin, uh, Van Corlin Village. And now I'm working in um, the area, uh, um, Track 61. Okay, Track 61 traditionally would not have done so well. And I'm gonna tell you why it's doing well. It's because of the partners there. Uh, that's Congress Village. Uh, right now, Congress Village is 70.3%. And this is in the South Bronx. And the reason why is the people there, there are a lot of seniors who are concerned and committed to do work. Um, adults, it's one of those groups there. And a lot of the work also that New York City Census has done. Because so you have to get credit where credit is due. They've done a lot of work. Uh, but the people there, there's a communication network where everybody notifies everyone, okay, about what's going on. And that makes a big difference. Um, I know that at one point they were discussing how come certain areas that have houses are not performing well. Well, I think, think about Co-op City, think about Washington Heights. And one of the things that I'm doing with, with our team, because we have a team that we work with, is analyzing each track. We go track by track and we look at the demographics. We look um, whether or not, what percentage of people speak other languages other than English? Whether or not they have access to internet? And you got to be very careful when, when they talk about internet access, because when they did those surveys about internet access, they were talking about anyone who had a smartphone is considered a computer. And that doesn't really help when it comes to completing the questionnaire. So um, a lot of times what you have is a digital divide that fortunately for us, it, ha it, ha it has been overcome in certain areas because of the schools sending these electronic devices to, you know, with the students at home. Um, so that's one thing. So um, the area that I'm talking about, that uh, Track 61 in the South Bronx, that's Conquerors Village, did very, very well, and it's because of the people there. Um, there are a number of there are a number of organizations that are so devoted, and that I, I so I'm I'm very respectful of them, and we become so I mean we talk on a daily basis basically, and I'm talking about like these people at Lincoln Hospital became basically my second family because we were on the phone, we we're doing um, community forums. We were um, doing um, recruiting events. They have provided space. They were publishing stuff in on the newspapers in the Bronx. Uh, we invited BronxNet. BronxNet actually has a little two minute. I, I, am, I, will, look, I will send the, 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 so you could see what was done. We had every member of different communities, uh, Muslim community. We had um, African community, we had Hispanic community. We have um, people from um, Honduras, people from Mexico, um, and they all gather and they all talked about what needed to be done and the fear in some of these communities that was very obvious and how we could overcome that. And so these forums, they, they serve as a, a very good foundation for creating um, the increases that we see now. And, you know, I am particularly very, very grateful for all these partners that made it possible because we cannot do the work if we don't have willing partners that come in and help us 
and do the extra, um, you know, effort that they do. Uh, like, you know, Mr. Eddie Cuesta that's there. Um, I haven't had the pleasure to meet you, Mr. Eddie Cuesta, but I'm hoping that to meet you soon because I know, you know, like every person that I know knows you and they know the, <laughs> the hard work that you do and they told me about you. Um, uh, so in 2010, I had an amazing group of um, complete count committees in the Bronx. And uh, we had a lot of young people that were in college. They were in Lehman College, they were in Coastals, they were at City College, and they in, in Bronx community. And what they did, and we created a, a school ambassador, and they will help students in the high schools in the Bronx. They teach them how to complete the questionnaire. Then they went home and they helped their parents complete the questionnaire. So th that's some of the stuff that went on. And these young people, they made, they made census sexy, okay? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, to a lot of people, the word census is not appealing, okay? So we have to figure out a way to make it interesting. So knowledge is key. Every community has different um, things that you have to know about the community to, to help them get involved. Um, we have basically every nationality in, in our team and different backgrounds. So that's the reason why it helps because when you know a particular, a particular group, a particular ethnicity, um, you're able to mingle and find out how do you get people involved? How do you get people engaged? Um, and I think that is a thing that happened um, that needs to happen in Wakefield and East Chester, that area there that needs help. Because there's, you know, they're not, they're not densely popular. They're, 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 they're homeowners. So it's not easy, like for example, and uh, when you talk about Co-op City, someone writes a letter and can put it underneath the door or very, or very uh, apartment and the information gets through or someone sends an email, okay? But when people have individual homeowners, it's not so easy to reach them, but there, there will be events, especially in the summer coming up where there will be um, outdoors where we can outreach. And depending on the celebrations and the different activities that people take, specifically churches are so important um, because it, through churches, I mean, I, I cannot tell you, we had a partner in uh, the church is called the Church of the Mediator in 2010. They served such a, they did some amazing work in, in terms of providing space for training and they did so much outreach. Uh, now, this, in the current census, I have uh, Thessalonica in Mount Haven. They, uh, they're amazing. They're doing a lot of their um, work over Facebook Live. Um, so a lot of the churches are still providing services. And that's one doing virtual events with, with churches is very helpful. And they have a big, um, how can I say, a big influence on their um, constituents because they will listen to the uh, reverend and they will um, follow the advice that they're giving because they know that it comes from a good place. Um, so anyway, um, so in terms of what we are currently working with essential businesses. And um, so we have we have called, we have a group of teams called CRRs. These are census, re uh, census respondent representatives. And what they do is they help us call, they help us um, compile lists and then we send out materials, sometimes, uh, um, you know, like uh, swag materials, which we're running, we're running out of actually, to these, these businesses to put up like posters and, um, and that helps, that helps, you know, we become, it, it becomes noticeable that census is still going on. Okay, now one thing I'm, I'm, one thing I'm doing with the, with the schools is I've outreached all the parent coordinators of district nine and seven and a lot of the different zip codes with their help, with the CRR's help. And we ask them to please remind parents to complete the census before they return their devices, because they have to return these devices. So we ask them to do that. And I think that's gonna help a lot. Another thing that I'm gonna do, and we're trying to work on this, is having the schools that provide lunches during the summer, having the school become what's called a QA. That's a mobile questionnaire assistance. And through the MQAs, we will be able to go to anywhere, whether it's pantries, whether it's um, like school lunches, and we'll stand outside as parents or come in. We will be able to assist them to complete the questionnaire right in and there on site. So that's going to be helpful for us in terms of increasing those numbers, specifically in those areas that are difficult, to, that are hard to count. And we know that like 
for the ACO that I, re that I represent, this, we looked at the 60 lowest response tracks and we're trying to look at the demographics. We're trying to see how many people were born are not are foreign born, how many people speak other languages, how many people do not have internet. And we're looking at different things like that to help us look at what barriers are they facing so, so that we can overcome those barriers. So we could figure out how we're going to help us, how we're going to help them, not just now, but also when NARFO, the non response follow up comes, that's when the numerators go out. If we know the specific track, then we will know who to send there, who is sensitive to that population. And that's really important for us in terms of, so that the knowledge that we are putting together right now to, um, to see how we can over, re, increase the response rates track by track, because every track is very different. You know, if you look at a track, some tracks sometimes have 70% Spanish speaking. Okay, while others have a very mixed um, situation. So the Bronx, it's beautiful. It's beautiful because it's so diverse. You know, I go to um, different places in the Bronx and I, I taste the food. Um, at Unionport, I was in Unionport not too long ago, and I was looking at Indian food, food from Bangladesh, and I said, "What a wonderful thing!" But at the same time that it's wonderful, it becomes a barrier when language is involved and different communities are all together. Like for example, we have a lot of um, multi. Um, uh, so we have multi-unit buildings, right? Family, you know, units, right? And these buildings, since they have so many people, a lot of times you have a neighbor right next to you who doesn't speak your language. And even if you wanted to convey something about the census, you can't because you don't speak the language. So one of the things that needs to happen, we need to identify people within each community in those in those areas to help us. So if there's people who speak Bengali, we need to identify these leaders to go around in their building. You know, even if it's a person, we get two or three people in a building. And we ask them, can you go around and just maybe put in a, a piece of paper uh, underneath the door or where they can see it at the elevator about census. Make it not, make it, make everybody see it. Um, so we have to be, you know, so knowledge is key again. Okay, so um, when you think about how we're gonna make this happen is the knowledge of the community and what entices them, what makes them, What's the thing that makes them feel like, okay, I can make a difference. So you cannot just tell people, just fill out the census. You have to tell them why it makes a difference. For example, I'm a mother of three children, okay? One of them is autistic and I have another who is transgender, okay? So that, those are very special things. Therefore, I want my children to live in, a, in, to have resources, right? To have things that will protect them. And parents are very keen to these things. They wanna know what is in it for them. We know that for special needs children, there's not a lot of resources, okay? We need more resources for special needs children. We need, and all those things come from where? From the information that we provide to census. That's how this, uh, uh, this, resource, this uh, funding is appropriated. And when they understand that, for example, if they are waiting an hour for a bus, and all of a sudden, if they're able to submit information to census, they may wait less because now, you know, it's known that that area needs more buses coming because there's more there's more people that live there. I think this is where this is where it makes a difference for people. They have to see how they make a difference, and they have to see that if they're looking at a person that may they think that it's not related to them, it's an immigrant or whatever it is that they think of them, and maybe they don't speak the language. They have to understand that if that person doesn't complete the census, there will be less resources in that community for them as well. So that we all have to uplift each other. We all have to figure our way to, you know, make sure that everyone gets counted. Um, and it has to be done through language, obviously, because, you know, like I said before, you have a multi, um, so multi units where people may be in the same building, they may not even know the, the next door neighbor or the language they speak. So, um, so, you know, when I look back at the success we had in Washington Heights, it's very easy to see why. They were, it was very homogeneous population. It spoke the same language, Spanish, right? So there were no barriers to language. So if you have one person communicated to the next, or, or even they from Washington Heights, they communicated to Highbridge or the parts of the West Bronx that most Dominican people live. Okay, so that made a big difference. Now, when you have people who are Bengali, West African, they don't even, they're not even able to communicate. So we need to identify leaders in the community that can help us. Um, to be able to do this. Um, I have some great partners. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard of uh, great uh, grandparents around the world. 
and Miss Priscilla um, Turka, amazing human being. She's in Baldwin, New York City Census, and they do outreach everywhere. So she's part of Wakefield. She does a lot of work in Wakefield, and she's working with New York City Census. And I think that uh, she's a great person to outreach in terms of what needs to be done in that area there to increase those numbers. Um, anyway, so again, we still have until October 31st to complete the questionnaire. The, um, it might be, we're still waiting to see whether or not enumerators will go out early. It's a possibility that they will go out before um, August 11th, which is the date that enumerators are supposed to go out. It, there might be a possibility that they may be released early based on, we're still waiting on headquarters to tell us, but uh, the date for enumerators to go out is August 11th, and the date, the final date to complete the census online or submit it is um, October 31st. Um, so we do have that time that is available to us. Um, so anyway, I don't know if you guys have any questions. I, don't, I probably went overboard. Um, no, thank you for that presentation. I, I think that it, it, it really spoke to some of the things that we, you know, we are often confronted with, which is, you know, how do we get more people to come out? How do we, um, where we've see, seen successes in other communities, what happened there that we need to possibly duplicate in another area? And I think I heard you say, you know, we have to really, um, we saw there was success because of that, that homogeneousness, but we don't have that in the Bronx. So we have to figure out what it, what it is that we, um, how to use our diversity as a, um, as a, a powerhouse. So um, what I'm hearing is is we need to work into in those maybe smaller groups or, or incorporate in those smaller groups um, exactly what you're saying that we're making sure that we're in, in, having forums like this right where everyone is included we're being inclusive and we're giving ideas and we're saying hey you know if you're part of this segment of our uh, Bronx population we we want to hear from you but not just you reach out to the rest of your your folks. So I, I I thank you so much for that presentation. I think it just went right to those those specific points that we really want to make sure everyone um, hears from their trusted person within their community. So if Chris, if you see If not, then we'll jump right into our next presentation. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I know we've done these on WebEx the last two months, but just in case anybody's not familiar, uh, if you do have a question that you want to ask in the participant list, there's a little raise hand button in the bottom right corner. Um, and if you're on a phone for audio, it's star nine uh, that'll raise your hand. So if you want, to ask a question at this time, just raise your hand in WebEx or with your phone. Uh, and I'll keep an eye on the list here for a second to see if we have any. It, it, is it okay? Because I couldn't find, can, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah sorry, you know, this is Eddie, you know, I'm sorry, I couldn't find the little click to, to, to really raise my hands. But, you know, Lucia, thank you so much. I think what you have mentioned is so important, you know, just to add, um, um, we really strongly believe that's so important to count to everyone. Um, and I just want to say that um, the idea of looking at census track uh, and converting it into communities, name of the communities like Belmont, you know, Wakefield, I think that's a good way for us to proceed in terms of, you know, a lot of people might not know exactly where the, the census track is, but, you know, this is some of the thoughts, you know, that I think will be so important for us to really put together. And this has been a you know, great group to really look at as 53 percent. And, um, you know, we have to continue learning from each other because a lot of things that you say in these meetings over the last few months, you know, we really put it into practice. Um, and as Maria mentioned, even though we never got funding from the state or from the city, you know, we know the importance of getting our community counted. And this is a great opportunity. Because yesterday we noticed, you know, how the Bronx really was coming out to vote, you know, even though with the pandemic, um, as well as, you know, people getting used to, you know, in terms of their absentee ballot requesting it. So I think this is a great connection 
for the next several months for us to really work together. You know, uh, I have a suggestion, and this could go towards, you know, the borough president of America. Uh, we have throughout the communities, you know, this workforce uh, offices, you know, Workforce One, a lot of foreign born and a lot of our community, they are requiring looking for, for jobs. So this is a way where we could really concentrate on targeting, you know, those locations, you know, through a word from the borough president, you know, or, you know, for any other resource that we might have to really get those locations, you know, to really support and, you know, promote the census in those areas, you know, which is so much, very much needed. You know, that's what I wanted to add. Thank you again, you know, for, for allowing us to be part of this group. I probably have to be dropping off in a little while, but we continue our efforts and we have a program that is put together, we're putting together to making sure after this election has passed, um, to really promote those communities through zip codes, neighborhoods, you know, and census track, um, you know, to making sure that our community gets counted. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. I think Can that say something? Can you guys hear me? Uh, who, who was that? Somebody speaking. Can I say something? Go, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we so the idea is this. The idea I understand. We we recognize that Belmont had a lot of issue. Even when we were recruiting, we couldn't recruit people in Belmont. And one of the things we did, we went into demographics. We went into. I share with you um, a PDF that I hope uh, um, you you will get. Everybody will get this PDF. It'll, so it'll give you some census um, mapping tools. And one of them is the reporter. The reporters. We went in there. We found out um, ACS information about Belmont and a specific track in there, 387. The 387 track, okay, that track, specific track, we looked at it, we couldn't even get, we couldn't recruit people to, to work for census and we had a really hard time. So one of the things we found out is there were a lot of foreign born people, many of them who did not speak English. So there, it was like a light bulb. We realized why we had such a difficult time. Now, we also having a difficult time with response rates there. So I share with you some stuff here, the mapping tools. I share with you some of the um, some of the um, videos and even questions that people have difficulty understanding about. For example, race. How are they categorizing race and how you do it? All that stuff is in that thing that I share with you. That little um, that Tracy just put up. Um, so that's why I think when you think about communities, I think that by the yard it's hard and by the inch it's a cinch. So if we approach like a whole area it's hard for us to identify what are the barriers so one of the things we do we go to the minute we go to the smaller track and in there we can see who lives there what's going on how we can how we can help these people there to be able to so that they can respond and that's why we approach it that way but we also look at the whole community we look at Fordham heights we look at you know the mud haven but we also look at individual tracks because it's easier to target it's easier to overcome barriers that way. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. So much more. Make sure that we jump right back into the, the schedule. Um, and Leacock, who's been with us before, he's a Bronx lead at New York City Census. So um, we're gonna ask Josh, uh, come on down. What do you have uh, for us in terms of an update from the New York City Census? Sorry, I thought I was unmuted there for a second. Hi everyone, uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I just wanted to provide some updates about some of the stuff that we have going on, such as events and uh, some of the neighborhoods that we're focusing on right now. As it stands right now, uh, we have two uh, predictive dialer phone banks that we have running. Uh, we have the Spanish phone bank that's run by my field associate, Jeremiah Cedeno, uh, which runs from about three to five on Tuesdays. We also have a Kansas uh, predictive dialer. So if you have any of your, if any of people at your nonprofits or any volunteers speak Cantonese or Mandarin, that is one of the languages that we actually uh, do need. And we have a predictive dialer for that. I know uh, either next week or the week after we'll be setting up uh, our predictive dialer. That'll also be in Arabic as well. And so I'll send you more information about that. Uh, we also have been asking people and I'll drop this in the chat. 
um, to sign up for our friends and family outreach. So we've been asking people to essentially uh, go through their contacts and actually, um, there we go, and actually uh, engage with people that uh, that are in your contact to see if they filled out the census, uh, make sure, making sure that they filled out the census, and then have them actually reach out to people in their contacts list. And so that's um, another way that we've really been trying to reach out, uh, really reach people that haven't filled out the census that really don't see the importance of it. We've also uh, been testing out, uh, the comms team has been testing out language to really show kind of like how this is kind of a civil rights movement and also how to kind of like paired us together with the times that we're in, uh, such as uh, COVID and as well as with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and then finally, uh, every, every Wednesday, so today, um, from six to eight, we're actually running a dialer in the lowest counts neighborhoods in the Bronx. So uh, this includes Williamsbridge, uh, Edenwald, mostly the North, uh, North Bronx, because that's actually uh, the lowest count area in all of the Bronx right now. And so that's actually, and I've actually been talking with Tracy about uh, ways that we can actually do a lot of outreach there to make sure that people are actually uh, filling out the census. And then other than that, um, that's all I have. If anyone has any questions uh, or any ideas or anything, I'm willing to talk. For the update, Josh, um, I think, you know, it's, think it's really um, powerful at this point where we are over that proverbial hump of 50% to really start digging into those particular neighborhoods the a lot of home ownership is a lot of, you know, um, folks that are, are not connecting for some reason to to um, why they need to do the census. And I think when we discuss it, we talk about services and this and this and that, but uh, we don't always get to the, talk about the TANF and, and different things. There's so many a wide variety, but do we, we don't talk a lot about um, the resources of transportation, infrastructure, and I think that's what feels that needs to be wrong in those particular areas. And, Um, 100%. I can drop the links right now. All right. So, a long way um, for me. Awesome. This little parking table. Get ready to unmute raise your hand or while I'm um. Um, if you see, let me know. We really want to be respectful of people's. Yeah, at this point, uh, at this point, there I don't see any. Uh, any. Our next presenter is uh, uh, Northeast Census Campaign Manager for a strong partner. Have okay, that's fine. Um, that means you did. That means you you uh, you left no stone on. Um, we need to move forward. Um, we'll All right. So I see Julia shared a screen. So that's good. 
Yeah, sorry, I was, I was, um, it was kind of breaking up there, Deputy Borough President. So I, I wasn't sure. Are we, are we ready to start? Yeah, the the deputy's internet connection seems to have been uh, not cooperating there slightly. It was it was somewhat broken audio, um, but from everything I heard, I think you're good to go. Okay, great. Um, so good to be with everybody again. Uh, last time I uh, spoke to the CCC was actually I think in October last year, so it's been a minute. Um, so just as a reminder, um, my name is Julio Rivera. I'm the Northeast Census Campaign Manager for Naleo Educational Fund. Um, and if you don't know us already, uh, we are the nation's leading nonprofit 501c3 that's dedicated to promoting civic engagement within the Latino community. Um, and so every 10 years, what that really means is doing, running a big campaign on uh, the census. Um, this past couple of years, the, our campaign is called uh, Agasa Contar. Um, hopefully you've seen us either on TV or on, 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 on Facebook or something like that. Um, and our goal is to make sure that Latinos are fully counted participate in the census. Um, so we concentrate in areas with large, uh, hard to count Latino communities. And of course, New York and the Bronx specifically are, are one of those communities that we want to spend some time on. Um, a couple of things I just want to highlight off the top are our hotline, um, 877 So I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, um, but also our website, Alessa Contar. I just think those are two really good uh, resources for for our communities. If you're an organizer looking for more materials, Alessa Contar, the website is a great resource. Um, and if you want to refer your community members to get more help, um, people that may have questions about the census, our hotline is a great resource. So I wanted to take a few minutes to just highlight some of the things that we've been up to lately. Uh, June 17th was actually a, a big day for us. Um, it was uh, the launch of our national program um, partnership with uh, Telemundo. So on that day, um, we had some programming, some segments on Telemundo most of the day in the morning, in the afternoon. Um, we also had some online uh, webinars that we did on both Instagram and on Facebook, um, just again, to raise awareness of this, promote the hotline, um, get to communities that we might not be able to get to through other means like direct mail or through phone banking, things like that. And uh, we got over a thousand phone calls that day um, from the community. I, I myself was on the hotline um, asking people and the majority of the calls were people that uh, had questions about how to fill out the census form, right? Um, they had, hadn't received their census form, wanted to figure out how they could fill it out. Had one call from some uh, person that was living in a garage and I wasn't sure if she had been counted on her census form. So those are the kinds of calls that we get um, those are the types of uh, people that we're, we're trying to get the information to. So I want to talk about this because uh, the whole goal of this partnership with Telemundo was to focus on some of the areas that Telemundo actually has a market share in. Um, so these are the five states that we were targeting, um, including New York. Put all of these together, you're talking about two thirds of the Latino population in the country. Um, here in New York, we have uh, over three, almost four million Latinos that live in the self-response rates, the majority of Latino communities, as you've probably heard, are lagging behind other communities. So um, New York, unsurprisingly, given its large share of Latinos, is, is has a little bit of a response rate. More specifically, um, in New York, these are the counties that we were actually trying to target with this partnership. Um, so New York, Queens, and Bronx, um, especially, um, we're talking about 800,000 Latinos. And of course, um, we want to see that self-response rate up. Um, we're third in the city, um, so we're not doing we're doing pretty good relative to the city. Um, co but compared to other parts of, of even just our region here in the Northeast, um, we want to see uh, those response rates start to climb a little bit more. So I want to uh, just take a minute to do a quick comparison. So one of the benefits of working uh, regionally, um, and our region covers uh, Pennsylvania, Eastern Pennsylvania to Massachusetts. Um, so we do keep an eye on some of the numbers and response rates that we can get. Um, so you can see here, Bronx, 53.9%. Um, it's not doing, it's not doing bad actually. Um, it's doing relatively okay. Um, but one, one story that we see a lot are uh, these counties that are doing pretty well, right? New York is a unique place, like in so many other ways. Um, when you talk about the county level, you're really just talking about a completely urban environment, densely populated, lots of people of color, lots of immigrants living there, right? 
Um, but that's not the case in most counties throughout the Northeast. Um, the example I want to point out is actually Hartford. As you can see, it has a great response rate. It's above the national average at 66%. But if you actually start to drill down at the city level, um, like I said, this is where the our hard to count communities are concentrated. Um, that same Hartford, the city, the urban core of that county is down way below the national average. So this isn't surprising. Um, we wanna, we're working to pump up these uh, response rates as much as possible these are what we always knew were going to be hard to count. Right? Um, sorry, I'm having some issues with my audio. So we always knew that these communities were going to be hard to count. That's because of all the characteristics that we talked about back in October, right? Immigrants, hard, uh, people that move often, renters, people living in non-traditional households, all of those communities are concentrated in our cities and places like so one thing I did just want to point out to everybody, if you haven't seen this already, it's the hard to count. Um, one of the newer tools is the bottom 20%. Um, so everything in purple is actually not just the lowest responding areas within that community, but they're actually the bottom responding areas in the entire country. You can see here some of the areas in the Bronx that we're keeping an eye on. We're planning on further work and engagement in our places like East, East Tremont, um, places like Fordham, um, all those purple areas, those are the places that need that extra engagement in the next month and a half. Before. So what are we, what are we doing? And I'll, I'll take a quick second there in case there are any questions or comments um, people might have. I don't, I don't see anything, so we can keep going. Um, so one of the things that we did want to highlight is our great partner, Dominicanos USA, of course. Um, you know the, the work that they're doing already. Uh, they're doing, they have, they're running an active social media campaign, they're posting images, videos, they're holding uh, Facebook Live events to talk about the census. Um, they're doing their own in-reach, um, phone banking to their own uh, community members that they've served in the past. They're running email blasts. Um, some great images that you can see on here are some of the things that they've been sharing online. Um, and I want to point this out because um, not only are they doing great work, but uh, we were lucky enough, fortunate enough to be able to subgrant to some organizations throughout the country. Um, so we've been able to subgrant to to DUSA as well to try to um, fertilize some of the work that they're already doing and hopefully be able to amplify um, the great work that they're doing already. We've also been holding some virtual town halls here at the local level. Um, so you saw our CEO, Arturo Vargas with Telemundo. Um, we've been partnering with local organizations doing the hard work here on the ground. Um, on April 30th, I believe it was, uh, was El Dia del Niño. Um, we partnered with Casita Maria um, to hold this event to uh, answer people's questions, answer uh, the community's questions. Um, and just, again, bring more consciousness to the census and try to activate people to, to answer their form. We also held, you, you may have been a part of our phone bank a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we held one for Bronx specifically. We dialed over 4,000 phone numbers. Um, we had 417 conversations with people. Um, most, a good number of those people had, uh, had actually already responded to the census, um, but a majority of them uh, either hadn't responded or um, we weren't entirely clear if they had responded. So um, we were able to reach a good number of people in just a couple of hours actually using our predictive dialer. Um, this was early on when um, the city didn't really have uh, its, its phone banking predictive dialer program up and running yet when we had planned this. Um, so we've since started to uh, steer away from doing phone banking in the city. Um, but we do have a new uh, text bank um, program that we will be starting in the near future as part of our uh, national coalition with the census counts 2020. Um, so once we start putting that together, the whole idea will be um, sending five messages out to people um, and slowly getting them geared up to actually uh, get out the vote. So um, not only get out the count, but since the census will be ending at the end of October, then transitioning people to make sure that they're, they're aware the election is coming and that they also make it out to the polling place. We'll be happy to share that information once we have that 
program up and running and we'd be happy to partner with organizations at, with the CCC. So I want to take a quick second to just talk about our messaging, the shift that's taken place. This is a shift that everybody's had to had to make. Um, we really came out after the pandemic, um, shifting our, our focus to the pandemic, right? And how it ties into the census. Um, so really uh, pointing out to people what an important role the census plays in making sure that we have funding for our hospitals, that we have funding for our local healthcare system. For a while, we kept talking about, do we have enough hospital beds? And you know, this is one of the ways that we make sure we have enough hospital beds in our community is getting counted in the census. And of course, reminding people that this is one way we can make sure that our community is going to have the resources it needs to be able to recover moving forward. But I also wanna just remind everyone about our other research, the research that we did the last couple of years, um, our original messaging research, and we surveyed Latinos, we helped focus groups throughout the country um, to figure out what mattered to our community. Um, people wanted to hear how the census was convenient, it's safe, it's required, their information is confidential, it's easy to do. Um, and they wanted to hear about how uh, local programming will get resources because, because you're filling out the census, right? Um, one thing that we found out that was a little bit newer, um, and this was after the citizenship question had been removed, after all of that had happened, um, was people also wanted to hear about this community, this message about community empowerment um, and making sure that you're counted, making sure that you have a voice uh, in, in your community. And, and you get that by filling out your census form trusted messengers and the people that we're really trying to lift up and amplify throughout this campaign. Um, these are the, the groups that our community really trusts. They're educators, people working in our schools. Um, they're actually our local elected officials, so like the president. They're the community organizations that are serving our local Latino and Hispanic communities or the Cita Marias of the world. Um, and these are the people that we do want to activate um, and help us spread, amplify this message. If you want to find out more about that, I'm happy to share a link to that to that research. And did want to point, looking forward to a couple of things that are happening. This week is actually LGBT plus week of action. Um, we held a uh, town hall with the Commissioner of Insurance of California yesterday on Facebook. Um, we're amplifying the message of our national uh, coalition partners during this week. A lot of uh, Twitter storms and and uh, virtual town halls that we're amplifying. There will be a sixth reminder mailing, uh, as you are probably aware. Um, we originally thought this was going to be a paper questionnaire, but it's just going to be a postcard reminder before people start heading out to the doors. Um, and I wanna point out the date of July 28th. That's one day that we're already looking at as a national day of action. There's also the upcoming New York Regional Surge Week. Uh, so July 27th through August 2nd, uh, this will be a week just specifically for the New York region um, to amplify the message of the census. And the idea behind this, we don't have too much information that's been shared with us by the Census Bureau on what exactly this is going to look like. But the whole idea behind these days of action, what we've seen, the trend has been when all of the advocacy organizations, when all the nonprofits, when the Census Bureau are all in sync, amplifying this message, doing town halls, doing uh, interviews on, on our media outlets, that's where we really see a, a visible bump in the response rates. Um, so we want to do a couple more days of actions. That's the idea behind these surge weeks um, to get a couple of more uh, bumps in those response rates right before we head into uh, what will be the non-response follow-up. So some dates to keep in mind if you are looking to get active on those dates during the surge week or July 28th, um, let me know, get in contact with me and we can uh, see what kind of things we can collaborate on. I'll just finish off with a couple of resources that we have. Uh, so you, again, I mentioned our website, agasecontar.org slash resources. You can find our communications toolkit. This is a great resource, talking points, establishes the social media posts, um, but there's a lot more on that website. FAQs, um, guidance on filling out the census form, videos, um, all sorts of great things. So I've released some uh, social media press kits. Um, so this is actually from our second round of, of memes and social media posts. Um, you can go on to this link and actually just automatically share 
uh, the ease of some sample um, language. We have additional uh, examples in that social in that toolkit that I showed just a, a second ago. And lastly, I'll just amplify again our national hotline. It's eight seven seven in Senso. Um, like I said, we're, we use that as a way for to communicate to our community to um, answer any questions. Um, so feel free to share it um, and refer people there. You can also continue to receive. Uh, updates by um, texting census to 97779. Happy to take any questions that there may be on that. So this is the part where I just do a little bit of connecting and while I'm talking, anybody who wants to raise their hand, please do. Also, we still have the folks on from the previous presentation. So if your question is one that you that includes them as well, you know, raise your hand now as we're speaking. They, I want to thank um, thank you, Julia, for that presentation and Leo and all that they do that you guys are laser focused on the census. And and we and, and I think um, it, it it is part of really why uh, um, we come to you a lot to to actually present because we know that you have some great ideas. So, um, Chris, any hands raised or? Uh, no, I don't see any. Um, we're, we're good on that front. Okay, so I, um, looks like there is a question. Check the questions there. Um, Chris. Sure, yeah, just just one question. Uh, Meredith asked if we could have the materials distributed by email. Uh, Tracy said yes. Okay, I think, you know, I think that's a point for anybody who's either watching or or in the meeting. Um, you know, that if you reach out to Tracy, uh, you, you can get these things, you know, certainly things that we'd be looking to share. Okay. Okay, so um, we that that actually is a good place to end. Um, again, thank you all to all of the presenters today. Um, we need to continue the 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 fight. It's we're halfway there, as they say. It's we have to we have to keep uh, well, a little more than half. on this issue and, and be inspired and encouraged by each other. And I wanna thank you for what you did today and thank you for sharing with our, our um, audience and um, go out there and do the work. Thank you. You're still live. <laughs> yeah, just just uh, 